So what we need to do is get a browser up. Um, of course, as I say, you need an internet connection. It's easiest with a wired network connection. Um, you don't have to set up any uh, Wi-Fi spots or anything like that, or passwords and so on. Um, thoroughly recommend using um, a wired connection. In fact, you won't get very far with um, uh, with a wireless uh, within Linux and Scratch once it boots because you need extra packages to get it working and it can be fraught with problems. You need uh, firmware drivers built into the kernel and uh, yeah, it's just a lot more grief. If, uh, if you can get a wired connection plugged into your machine, it's a lot, lot better. So, uh, yeah, this browser's defaulted to their own web page. That's fine. We want to go to Linux from scratch. So, if you type in Linux from scratch and press enter, you can see it defaults to the page, or you can go directly to the web page, which, as you can see, is www.linuxfromscratch.org. So, I'm just going to click on there. And there's the landing page. We want to go to Linux from scratch, so you can either click on that link there or this button up here. And it tells you all about the project. Um, if you didn't know too much about it, it's worth reading. And what we'll do is to read the book online. It's the best way to do it. So Linux from scratch 11.0 is what we're going to be building. It's just been released. Um, well, it was very late yesterday it was released. Um, it was about 9, 10 o'clock GMT, so it's quite late in the day. Um, they generally release them 1st of March, 1st of September, but um, maybe they had problems or maybe they had some more um, packages to update, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's here now. So what we need to select here is there's several links here that are worth mentioning, these three here. The actual book is under the third link, but these other two links, uh, if they don't already have, being as the package, the book's just been released, there's any errors, any errata that appear for the book will appear here in time. And also, if there are any security updates, any advisories, that will appear here, and you can see the link to take you. And as you'd expect, you probably wouldn't release, uh, expect any at the moment, being as it was only what well, was released less than 10, uh, 12 hours ago. So um, there could be some in coming days. So if you are building this, say, you know, a week or a month's time, you'll probably find that there are things there to take note of. And if it's a system that you are planning on keeping and using, then you, you almost certainly want to take note of them. If you're building Linux from scratch just from an educational, which is what its intention is originally, or an experimental point of view, you probably don't want to take too much notice of that. Um, it will be a distraction. Um, you probably just want to concentrate on the actual build itself. And then maybe if you do want to um, use Linux from scratch as a um, everyday operating system, then to either update them or rebuild it again and gain gain more knowledge in, in the build process. But as as you saw there's nothing there for now so I'm just going to go into this link here, the stable OS, and this is the actual Linux from Scratch book with all the information for uh, building the operating system. So what I'm going to do is I'll start at the beginning. Uh, it's all the first chapters like kind of information laying the ground rules for how um, Linux from scratch came about. There's a target audience, target architecture. So generally it's for 32-bit or 64-bit Intel-based machines. And when I say Intel-based machines, that does include 32-bit and 64-bit AMD Intel compatible machines as well. Um, you can see some stats there. Um, I've run the build using some scripts and yeah it's probably about that size and about that time um, just trying to think 
that's about four hours, isn't it? 233 minutes. Yes, yeah, it, probably no, no more than four hours on four cores um, on this Apple, uh, which incidentally is the same series as, as this test uh, or example they've got here, although it is an i5 and it is a mobile CPU. So um, I'm surprised that that i7 doesn't actually do it a lot quicker than that compared to this Apple. Um, maybe this Apple was a, a lot faster clock rate than that i7 was. That's a possibility. Um, but yeah, you, you are looking, and this would be end-to-end. -end. This isn't including time reading the book, typing in the packages, and so on. So um, to, to build this on this Mac, you're probably looking at maybe 12 hours of sitting at the terminal in total, I'd, I'd reckon, at, at the outset. Uh, sorry, not the outset, at the, at the most. Um, so that's worth bearing in mind. It's kind of maybe a project to do over the weekend on a reasonably fast machine. If you've got a super fast machine, one of the latest ones, then you could, probably could knock it out in probably maybe four hours because you've got to bear in, time, bear in mind the time it takes to type in commands, copy and paste commands and so on. Um, if you were to script all the build on a very modern machine, it might only take an hour or so or, or less possibly. But it can get quite intensive, intensive at the keyboard, typing things. There's some prerequisites here for um, the kind of knowledge you're expected to have before you build. Um, if you haven't got this knowledge, then it's advisable to read these links for, for the knowledge. Obviously, following this video, you'll be able to see what I do and copy it um, if you're unsure what to do. Um, standards, LFS tries to be compliant in these standards as much as possible. So if that matters to you, that's, that information's there. Now this page is quite interesting because it tells you the reason why certain packages are in this book. Uh, Linux from scratch, when it first started, was really quite a bare bones package, but they've, over the years, although it's still quite a basic system, um, it's a little bit more than bare bones now, I'd, I'd say. It's, um, it's a reasonably usable system. You wouldn't be able to do much with it, but you'd certainly be able to do quite a bit with it, especially if you're le learning the command prompt if you're learning how to use the bash shell prompt for example um, you'd have everything that you'd needed if you're trying to learn about some of the tools that are standard in in the Linux system for example said or or maybe patch or make or whatever you'd you'd have um, an environment that's perfectly usable so that's that shows you the reasons why um, certain packages are installed um, you may think, you know, why, why do I need this in a basic system? But that gives the explanation there. This page shows the typography, so it gives you an idea of what certain typefaces or bolding and so on, or these box outs, what they mean and so on um, throughout the book. This bit shows you the structure, so the introduction is the bit we're in at the moment. Part two, which is where we actually do some of the preparation for the build, which incidentally we've already done because we've created partitions and, and formatted the file systems. And then the two main parts, uh, part three and part four, where we build a temporary um, system, which we use to build the final actual LFS system, which is the system that will be used. And at the end of that, we will delete this, this part of the build because it's not needed. It is only needed for this bit in part four. Again, there's a bit about the security advisories and errata, which we've already looked at. <clears throat> so let's go into this introduction. And it tells you what the individual chapters in the book do. It tells us what's new since the previous release. And there's a change log there, so all the changes that have been made since the last release, if that's important to you. So resources, if you want help, <clears throat> various places to get it from. Um, I can and do answer any queries people have, um, although I'm not involved in any way with Linux from scratch itself. So if you want to hear something from the horse's mouth, the best thing is to um, sign up to the mailing list and ask the people at Linux from scratch. Um, I'm purely an end user, as you would be, um, building it yourself. 
Again, there's some more information on help and how to report errors. Um, th this I've had before. People say, like, I've got this error. Well, it doesn't mean anything. It's the bit that the stuff that comes beforehand that's important as it contains the actual error message and what led up to the error message.